I won't make a pun about mailing it in. Today, it's armor of rings flat and thin. That's right, we're going to talk about chainmail. Oh, hello, friends. Loring here. And today, because the Noir Enigma wanted me to talk about armor, we're going to talk about chainmail. Yay! This is my mail shirt. M-A-I-L-L-E. That's what they would have called it in the uh, Middle Ages. Chainmail is a much later term, but that's okay. I don't mind the term chainmail. You automatically know what we're talking about. It is a weave of metal rings. In this case, some of them are solid, some of them are riveted. And it makes a very flexible shirt that offers very good protection. Particularly against cuts, somewhat against thrusts, not always so much against um, an impact from a mace or even the impact of the sword itself, but you usually wear a padded garment underneath. This is a gambeson or a padded jacket or a padded jack or there are akatins and there are all sorts of terms for these. And then we get into arming doublets, subjects for other videos of course. This is mail. It's lots of fun. And it's about 2,400 years old. No, not this shirt. Not this particular shirt. This is a modern reproduction made in medieval style with modern materials. But the concept of mail goes back to at least 350 BC. We know that the Celts made it. Possibly the Etruscans had some. 2,400 year old idea. Look how complex all these rings, thousands and thousands and thousands go up to making one Sure, you can imagine all of the labor that goes into making this. and must be in very valuable uh, at certain points in history. If we go back to 350 BC, yes, it would be. Uh, the Roman Empire then, of course, takes on male armor. They call it uh, Lorca Hamata. Not quite as long as that. And then we get into the medieval period. If we're looking at Saxon, Frankish, Viking times in Europe, uh, this would be a bit more rare. You don't have the same scale of labor to make this so it becomes quite precious a good gift but it's excellent armor in those times but made out of iron it can give way to a particularly hefty axe blow or a good sword but then as the metallurgy gets better and we get into the higher middle ages and the late middle ages we get these really excellent shirts of mail very good protection can uh, definitely keep you safe and as an example This sharp knife does nothing because the mail, the way it links together, provides this armored claw. So you have lots of mobility, really good protection. This particular shirt is called a halberjon. We'll see if the camera can keep focus. There we go. So it comes down just below the hips, not quite mid thigh, just below the elbows. So that's what a halberjon is. A halberk would be probably down to the knees, much longer sleeves. There's also the term burny. It's one of those terms which probably referred to a male shirt with shorter sleeves and not quite the same length. But it's body protection, and that's what you want. If you're going into a, a battle, you want to stay alive to the end of it. You may get hit, but armor that keeps you from dying is what we look at. I mean, I will say in martial arts, oh yeah, don't get hit. That's rule number one. But if it's in a big battle, you definitely want armor like this. And the advantage of this shirt of mail being at only 15 pounds, 7 kilograms. So you can wear it for long periods of time. It's very flexible. You can do most normal tasks of the day while wearing it. So if you're writing a story or it's for a role-playing game or video games, this is really the go-to armor, especially for adventuring, because it offers you some good protection, but you can still move and fight and do things in it, and it's not going to tire you out so much if you're used to wearing it. You do need to build up a little bit of stamina. You need to know what it's like to wear this armor. You've got to get a feel for it, but once you do, it's really not that difficult. I mean, people wear heavier weighted vests for workout today, so. Now, if we look 
we can see all of the rings. These are flat rings, nine millimeter, alternating riveted and solid. And a lot of male shirts were made that way. Later in the Middle Ages, we start to see all the links riveted. And I've seen examples of those in museums, um, particularly the Wallace Collection in London. That is a fantastic arms and armor exhibit there. And you can see some late medieval shirts and you can see the detail. The rings are smaller and it's just incredible. The amount of work that must have gone into it and the level of protection it provides is fantastic. Is it as good as plate armor? Well, no, because links, you know, rivets can pop and links can fall out and it does get damaged. The good thing is you can repair it quite easily. And that's why mail probably was around for so many years, like almost 2000 years of use because you can repair it and it is good. And because it's flexible, even if you had a plate harness on, it's what we call plate armor, it's called a harness when you assemble all the pieces, you could have that under the arms, you could have that around the groin, you can have that in places where you couldn't put plates because you wouldn't be able to move. So by adding mail to certain areas of plate armor, you keep it effective. So the use of mail goes on. Even today, butchers have forms of mail which help to keep them safe. Uh, as an interesting aside, when I was a safety person, well, we were doing the course, all of us at the company, and we learned that it's difficult to use the chainmail gloves to slice meat, but a lot of workers take them off, and then when they go to drop their knife, they instinctively go to catch it. Never try to catch a knife. You drop a knife, jump back, let it hit the floor, don't try and grab it. If it's a sharp knife, bad things happen. Random, uh, random content when we're talking about our male armor. So there we go. That is a look at chainmail. It is a really good, flexible armor. It's lots of fun to wear. It doesn't make that much noise. It doesn't make some noise. You can't exactly sneak around in it. Uh, this is just the Haubergeon part. I don't have a mantle. If I had a helmet, it could have an aventail, which means mail that is attached to the helmet and comes down to help cover, protect the neck. Uh, so there are a lot of other things. If you have leggings, they're called chausses, and so you could have a lot of mail. You could have 15, 20 kilograms of mail on your body if you really wanted. But it's fairly effective when it's good metallurgy. It's strong, if, they, if it's made of iron, if it's not the best quality metal, well, it's easy to repair because you can just take, you know, your couple handfuls of links, put them in to patch up the spot. And it's really good because even though this is shirt of mail I'm wearing, someone else, more or less, you know, not exactly the same size as me, a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, a little bit heavier, a little bit skinnier, they can still wear this shirt because the links move it'll conform to that person's body just as easily as mine. So you don't have to worry about fitting it the way you do plate armor in the later Middle Ages, where it has to be made for the specific person's body. And then if you gain too much weight, you need new armor. Henry VIII had that problem. But if we're talking about male, you just put the shirt on, take it off. I would try and show you how silly I look when I try to take the shirt off. I did that in a previous take and the camera went out of focus and we had to abandon that. So you do put it on just by kind of reaching through. You get the sleeves in your hands and you pull it over your head and you shake it down into place and to get it off you basically reach down and touch your toes. You just throw the shirt forward and it just kind of starts sliding off and then you grab it and just start pulling it off of your body. So it's really quick to get on, really easy to get off. There are other videos out there on, on YouTube that show you that but I wanted to give you a brief overview of this really cool male shirt that I have. Because yeah, we want to talk about armor as well. It's not just how to use a sword. Armor is a very important part. And if you're doing anything um, medieval, early Renaissance, even if you're doing uh, stuff that's antiquity for your stories or your games, this, this makes a huge difference. This is gonna keep you alive, not necessarily uninjured, but it's gonna help you survive whatever fight you're getting through. So that is just a brief look at male armor, a little bit of the history and what it looks like and a bit about how it's made. We could get into four and one and six and one and there's the ring combinations and Japanese male and Middle Eastern and then it gets used in India 
much later uh, than in Europe and other places. So we can see the longevity in different parts of the world. It's not just a European thing. Maybe we find that it came from there. The sort of, you know, our evidence says that's where it was invented, but it is used all across Asia and into Africa as well. So we should never just think of it as a small thing in one area. It is quite extensive around the world. And as a final note, a little rant. Chain mail is okay. I don't mind calling it chain mail. You know what it is. But there's no scale mail. It's just scale armor. Mail. This is mail. That's what it refers to. The weave of links. So there's no scale mail and there's no plate mail and there's no banded mail. You could have scale armor and plate armor and banded armor, which or splinted armor, the Lorica segmentata of the Roman era, with the metal plates that go across. Sure, but don't call those things mail. This is mail. Chain mail. M-A-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And it is really cool. Really fun to wear. Well, that's our brief look at it. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. And...